What's up? Uh, this is, uh, welcome back to the Walker Guitar uh, Weekly Lessons. This is um, Greengrass by Tom Waits. Um, and again, this is, this is linking together uh, with a lot of the lessons I've been doing where um, we're just trying to find fun, creative ways to apply bar chords. Um, now this is definitely a few steps along that. There's, there's quite a, uh, it's quite challenging to get this um, to sound how he, he does it. Um, but I really dig this song. Um, I, I always liked the song um, originally when I heard it because there's really just one guitar for the whole track, you know, and there's this tiny overdubs, but like the whole track is carried by this single guitar. And um, it's pretty awesome when you can, you can play your guitar to make it sound so environmental and, and really construct an entire, you know, an entire feeling that uh, usually you'd have a band do. So really killer. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go through and review some of the chords. But before you do this, you're really going to want to know all your, um, your stock bar chords. So like your majors and your minors. And uh, there's going to be some seventh chords in here too. So... Um, Let's, let's just jump into it. So the first one here, and um, also, by the way, I'm taking this from right after the intro, where I don't know what he's... He's got some weird, like, little jazz thing he's doing. I don't know what, what it, that is. I kind of bypassed that. I'm just getting into the meat and potatoes, so into the actual chords and stuff. So um, it starts with a C minor, and you're going to want to do a C minor here. So I'm going to, to some degree, I'm going to speed through the chords because... Uh, otherwise, this lesson's going to be like 30 minutes long. So, um, uh, by the way, um, go to Walker Guitar and get the document for this because it's going to help you a lot to be able to have something visual to follow along. So, um, anyway, so C minor bar, A string root. So we're on the third fret, just doing a stock C minor bar chord. That's going to be your first chord. And uh, he's going to move up to the eighth fret. F minor. That's your second chord. Same shape, you just scoot it. Third shape is a G7 chord. And that's at the third fret, so you want to know your stock G7 chord there. And then it comes back home to C minor. So three chords, C minor, F minor, and G7. Then there's an A flat major seven. Super killer. Um, now the best way to figure out how to do this one is just to lift up your finger off the C and bring the bass note here to the fourth fret instead of the third fret A string. Fourth fret E string, that's an A flat note. Lean over to where you don't play the fifth string so your finger is actually tilted over that string. All the other fingers line up and don't don't play the high string. So if you have a nice comfortable grip, you'll actually end up muting that uh, with sort of the, the base of your first finger anyway. So that's your A flat major seven. So for the most part, those are the, the four chords in the song and there is a bridge that has some new stuff. But um, uh, I wanna get more into the technique of how we need to play the guitar to make it sound the way he sounds, which is a lot more difficult, I think, than, uh, than just these chords. So you ready? Anyway, <clears throat> C minor, this is the order, F minor, G7, back to C minor, then A flat major 7, G7 again, back to C minor. So it's all on the, it's all on the paper there for you to check out. So. Um, Let's get into how he actually has to play this. Now, there is a, a pretty big right hand challenge for this. And um, the biggest part of that challenge, I think, is the is trying to figure out how to get that really cool backbeat kind of sound. The way you have to do this is um, you're going to take the heel of your right hand and you're going to play really you're muting the strings. You're, you're playing the C minor chord, but instead of just strumming it this way, you're actually uh, right in front of the bridge, just a little bit, like a half inch or so. In fact, a half inch might even be too much. But the idea is that you need to lay the whole karate chop, if you will, section of your hand, this whole part of your hand, 
that fleshy part, you have to lay that right in front of the bridge onto the strings and actually muffle the tone of the strings. Oh, and by the way, I'm never playing the first strings, so um, you can leave that out of the whole song. I know in the document there's pictures of the chords and um, they're barred over the first string. Um, don't trip on it, it's not a big deal. We don't, so I'm not going to play, play the first string ever. So anyway, um, the way that you're going to do this is you're going to just have to find that balance of where as you play your C minor, it's not open, real bright and twangy, but there's, you can still hear each note. Each note is clearly defined. If you're too far forward, all of a sudden it starts to become really indistinguishable and almost percussive if you're too far, you know, completely. It could get completely dead. So you're going to want to be pretty much sitting on the bridge. If you have an acoustic guitar or steel string, you're going to feel the pins of the bridge on the back side of your hand. If you have an electric or if you have a classical guitar, um, you'll just have to find the sweet spot. So that's the idea. Now, um, there's other benefits besides just the sound coming out of this. Um, by playing this way, it's going to help give you a lot of picking control, just general wrist control to be able to do the next step, which is bouncing the bass note. Um, now, if you listen uh, closely to the track, you're going to hear the bass going. I did kind of cheat and I approximated it a tiny bit just to make it to where it was um, easier for, for everyone. But I think I was only on like one chord and to be honest, I wrote this forever ago and I don't even remember which one. But um, the general idea is um, used in a lot of uh, the, this type of music and um, it's very cool to be able to do this anyway. So um, think of it this way, is that this, it's a C minor chord and that's your basic chord, but you're, also, you're alternating the bass every uh, two beats. So it's bass, and then you're going to play the chord, and then you're going to switch that bass note with your first finger to the low string. So it's fifth string, low string, fifth string, low string. Um, and the right hand is a little tricky too. You're going to pick just the one string at a time. You might actually just want to get used to that before uh, we try the whole pattern. So those are your quarter notes in on the, the document there. Now we have the the cool stuff, then the that stuff. So um, the way that I want you to uh, start applying this is going just root of the C minor chord, just that note, and then follow through with the top part, just that. And then you're going to move to the bass note. So we're actually we're actually leaving out the next piece. Just one, one, and then move your finger. And see if you can um, get used to all the string skipping that your picking hand has to do. Initially, it's, it's actually kind of hard and kind of tedious, but um, they're actually, uh, as you get used to this, all of these little intricacies start to help keep you on track uh, rhythmically, and it becomes actually quite fun. So if you can do that, this is our stock pattern. Just alternating bass chord, bass chord. But these fingers are staying put. I'm not changing the whole chord. I'm just changing the first finger note. So that's important to remember. Um, now the next step is if you can do that, you're going to want to add this. Or there's, there's actually two in between each bass note. perfect. Just think of it this way, is that as you do your bass and your chord, you're, you just went through with your picking hand, right? And because you are nice and up against the strings here, you're, you're already uh, kind of moving from the wrist in a very small area. We're not strumming this way. And your pick has just landed at the bottom of that. So if you just catch it with an up, your hand has to come up to do the next bass note anyway, so you have to pass over those strings it really shouldn't be too much more difficult to, uh, to add the ups. Down, down, up. That's your pattern. One, two, three, four. You could probably just, you know, <laughs> trip out all night on this. 
all of a sudden the guitar is becoming a little more three-dimensional because you have a bass line independent of this nice little chord percussion going on up top. So that is what you're going to do. Now, if I'm moving from bass note to bass note, that takes an entire, an entire bar. And every time you do that, that once on a chord, uh, for the most part, you're going to immediately have to move to another chord. In other words, this, one, two, three, four, is usually all you get. Or you at least want to think of it as that that's one rhythmic take. So uh, whatever helps you make sense of it. So um, in our song now, we're going to go C minor. And immediately, and, and this is very audible on the record actually, so um, you don't necessarily have to do this right away, but it's good to hear it, is the... You hear this kind of this kind of slide that almost pops out of the recording. It's a little bit louder than everything else. And he's he's just hitting his bass note of the C minor without the fingers here, sliding up to eight, where he's going to rebuild it on an F sharp minor. Same trick. So your first little bit is. So uh, once we do that, we're going to move to a G7. This time, actually, we don't move bass notes. We're just going to do the one bass note. So it's just going to be bass, chord. And I like to actually do the chord on the same string sets I was doing the C minor and the F minor on. In other words, I'm sort of picking on the fourth, the third, and the second strings. I'm trying to avoid the high string, and I'm trying to avoid the fifth string. So that's the general idea. Now, um, I think it's best to approach this song without nitpicking it too much. In other words, um, absorb the rhythm, absorb the approach to how you need to play each chord, but then um, look for the chord uh, as you go and read through the chart. And just remember that one bar of the chord is one pass through that rhythm. And uh, it's gonna, I think it's going to keep it a lot more simple than trying to read every tab and double checking and all that stuff. And we all do this. I do this all the time too. Um, but it's just going to help it kind of keep you uh, out of your head and more listening, going, oh, is this right? I think this is right. You know, it's, it's one of those songs where it's, I think it's a lot easier to learn by doing than it is just by trying to, you know, understand it, if you will. So here's how the, the verse goes now. And for the most part, the verse is the bulk of the song. There's just a bridge and the verse, and that's it. So it's just verse, verse, bridge, verse, or something or other like that. So it, it goes like this now, if we put it all together. So it's C minor. And it's kind of doing this for a while before he even starts singing. So it's kind of unclear as to where the verse is really beginning. But as it loops, you'll notice it's beginning with one pass on the C minor. So it's like, Lay your head where my heart used to be. And you're up to the F sharp already. That was it. It's quick. Then you're down to G7 for a bar. Then you're back to C minor for a bar. So all of that so far. major 7, which again is just taking your bass note, moving it, two bars. Down in the green grass, remember you helped me. So then you're on your G7 once, and then your C, uh, C minor again. So a whole pass through the verse. starts on C minor and ends on C minor, so it's uh, potentially confusing as to how long uh, or, or where it starts over or how long you're on that chord. So it's C minor, used to be, lay down in the green grass, remember, love. So 
those are your pieces. This is going to take a lot of work. I recommend really just listening to it, um, absorbing the technique, and just making that click, and then plugging it in over the chords. But if you can get this, then then kudos because this is a this is a rad song.